So in this course, we would like to present some quantum algorithms to solve uh, some optimization problems. So the first question that we could think of is, okay, if we use a quantum algorithm, it's, it's because it's more powerful than a, than a classical one, right? That, that an algorithm that runs in a classical computer. No? And this uh, leads to the question, to the comparison between quantum computation versus classical computation. And indeed, we expect that quantum computers are more powerful than classical computers, and that's why uh, we have uh, the notion of quantum advantage. So the question is, how much powerful are quantum computers than classical computers? And to uh, answer this question rigorously is very difficult, so it requires notions of uh, complexity theory, of the theory of computation. And uh, basically, the difficulty of using these deep and complicated uh, math ma mathematical structures, like the complexity classes, where we have classes like P and P, etc., is because, um, of course, we have given a problem, I don't know, the travel assessment problem, for instance, where we have a, a, a list of cities that are separated uh, among them by some distances, and we need to find the shortest path that connects these cities, right? So given a problem, we have a space of all the instances of the problem. That uh, for this example of PSP, it would be just uh, the different number of cities that we now have uh, and the, all the possible uh, distances that these um, cities could be separated. Okay, so the complexity classes deal with the, what we call the worst instances. Uh, so it's easy to realize that for a given problem, you can have a, an easy instance and a, a, a difficult instance. So given the set of instances of, of problems, uh, the complexity classes deal only about those instances which are more difficult. So the, let's call them worst instances. Okay, the issue is that um, most of uh, optimization problems are interesting in practical situations and therefore it's very likely that, uh, let's consider here the practical situation or the set of instances that occur here in practical situations. Let's call them practical instances. So it could be, be uh, very well that uh, the worst instances are very difficult both for classical computers and quantum computers, but in practice, when you uh, try to solve interesting problems that, you, 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 that occur in real life, quantum computers are better, okay? But not even, not even that. So we also, given an instance, we could think, so now I consider an instance, a decent instance instance and in a given instance we have uh, a space of configuration, right? In the case of uh, the PSP of the travel salesman problem would be all the possible orders in which the, the salesman can visit uh, the business. So then see we have here the state of configuration, so it's this of all the candidates to be a solution of the problem and we have a solution which is the optimal solution, the solution that we would like to find, right? The solution, optimal solution. Is it the solution that, that, that uh, we would like to find, right? So in practice, maybe, maybe uh, to solve our problem, it's not necessary to find the best solution, but uh, to find a, a solution that is good enough. So let's say that this set of pair of good solutions. So even if we have a worst instance that in general is very complicated, it could also very well be uh, to find to find to have an algorithm that although for this instance is very complicated and finding a good solution would be extremely hard, but uh, there are algorithms that easily reach uh, good uh, solutions. 
So in conclusion, we really want to compare paradigms of computation, like quantum and classical. This is a very difficult uh, task and, and requires some logistics, so some intuition, some logistics, and in general, it's very difficult to make rigorous experiments on this. We don't said that. Uh, I would like now to present a list of, uh, let's say, applications of quantum and classical computers and, and um, specify what's the expected uh, quantum advantage. So, in these different tasks, so how better are uh, quantum uh, computers than classical computers? Okay, so when we, uh, we said that it was very difficult to compare in general different kinds of uh, different paradigms of computation, and uh, but there is some, some consensus in the, the community of quantum information. So there are some problems for which we expect to have an exponential advantage. And, um, so what we say exponential advantage is that we mean that if the um, resources that, that um, solving a problem would require uh, an exponential time in the, in the size of the, of the input of the problem, we have as a computer, we expect this, this effort to be polynomial in the, in the um, quantum computer. So this is what we mean by the exponential advantage. By polynomial advantage, an example could be the, the, like, the logger out of, of shares, right? We know that if uh, it requires an effort of n in a classical computer, it's sort of n in a quantum one. So it's basically we, we achieve a, a, a power two of speed and not speed of, of power two. Okay, so for these problems, we uh, do expect an exponential advantage. So clearly, the most important problem uh, is that is the simulation. of many modern quantum systems. Clearly, uh, when we have uh, a quantum computer, one of the tasks that we will uh, run more equally with it will be a uh, simulation of many modern phenomena. For instance, I don't know, I think it's just about infinity. So that there are many problems that we really uh, we cannot address. We cannot address because we don't have uh, sufficiently high computational resources. This would be one um, example. There is a particularly controversial example of, of the simulation issue that is quantum chemistry. So although it's clear that for on the side of physics. Uh, there's a consensus in which quantum computers will provide an exponential uh, speed up. Concerning quantum chemistry, the issue is a bit more controversial in the sense that uh, not everybody agrees that we will find an exponential advantage. Okay? But with this exception, that I say that is controversial, in general, simulation of periodic systems will be. Uh, a very good application. Okay, another task uh, for which we expect to have a commercial uh, advantage is uh, so are specific problems. And uh, maybe the most paradigmatic example is the um, Shor's algorithm. So the short algorithm is the algorithm that is able to um, solve efficiently the problem of factoring or having the factors that meet um, a given number. Okay, and uh, we expect also other other fields like cryptography. Okay, we expect in the future also that other problems will appear for which. Uh, we have uh, a quantum solution, while its classical counterpart uh, is just not uh, possible to solve because uh, it's scaling with the system size. Okay. What about polynomial advantage? So, uh, one example of uh, polynomial advantage would be here I mentioned before. Would be uh, so we see uh, the data basis. There are many problems, in particular, those uh, 
a, a algo de ti. Ok. And uh, I'm sure that there are many other applications in the databases. And, and then what we have left is precisely uh, the field of optimization of those. Okay. Optimization of those. So in optimization, In optimization, we do expect a polynomial advantage that maybe some people are disappointed or one polynomial, but at the real advantage, it can be very, very um, important. Uh, so, uh, I don't know, if we reduce the power of uh, an algorithm by from n to the cube to n simply n, it would be a, a huge advantage. And this will be the uh, goal of this course. Just to understand what optimization problems are and how we can solve them uh, by means of quantum algorithms. Okay, so um, in this course, um, we will see different tools that we have um, in order to address these optimization problems. But I will explain that. This will be the, the goal of the next lecture to explain what an optimization problem is. But as an overview uh, of the course, let me um, show you which uh, techniques we will address. So we will present uh, a deep in lecture uh, for the classical methods that we have. So classical methods that we have to uh, solve this optimization algorithm that basically may divide into uh, sets the exact methods that uh, are the optimal solution but also some elicit methods that will give us uh, quite a lot of information also to, to work later with the quantum algorithms, so quantum methods. Quantum algorithms. Okay, and um, it's important to say that um, there are uh, several uh, elements of computation in, in quantum computation. Uh, the most popular um, parent of computation and the one that the big companies like IBM, Google, and all these companies use are digital computers. And um, so digital computers basically uh, are machines where we have qubits and we operate uh, these qubits performing quantum gates. Okay, and then we perform a measurement uh, at the end. So the most uh, popular uh, family of algorithms that solve optimization problems with digital computers are the traditional quantum algorithms, B, Q, A. And uh, its most popular example, that we have a lecture about it, is the so-called uh, Q, A, O, A, that stands for quantum approximate optimization algorithm. Okay, so this, the presentation of a BQA and QA OA as a particular example of BQA will uh, take place in lectures uh, six and seven. And also there is another relevant paradigm of communication, which is the um, analog computer. So analog computer, it's a quantum computer in which you also have qubits, but instead, instead of performing gates uh, like we do in the digital paradigm of computation, with another computer, what we do is that we uh, transform the Hamiltonian of the system in time. It's a, a type of, if you want, uh, I mean, uh, a type of um, simulation or quantum simulation. The following uh, sets. So usually, uh, you uh, initialize your system uh, in the ground state of a Hamiltonian that it's easy to prepare. And then dynamically, you change the Hamiltonian uh, along time and transform it into a new Hamiltonian, called the problem Hamiltonian, whose ground state encodes the solution of the problem you want to solve. Okay, and this is the main idea behind the adiabatic quantum computation. Adiabatic uh, is because the evolution of the system uh, is so slow that the system remains in the ground state. Okay, we will give the, the details of this uh, paradigm of, 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 of this algorithm in lecture uh, five. 
Okay. So with this, uh, we think we have an overview of the case of the course. So in the next lecture, we will present the what optimization problems are, and, uh, and also we'll present a very important class of optimization problems, which is the cube of uh, class, which uh, stands for quadratic and constrained binary uh, optimization. We will see that it's a very uh, simple parameterization of, of the problem with a lot of uh, application. In, uh, in uh, the lecture afterwards, we'll uh, see how different interesting practical problems can be mapped into a cubo problem. And from that moment on, our interest will be see how these three problems can be solved. Okay? We'll uh, have three approaches, three strategies. One will be review the classical methods. Uh, it will be a very short overview just to uh, uh, present and explain this exact linguistic, what are the most, most popular exact linguistic uh, approaches. And concerning the quantum uh, computation part, we will focus in, in these two uh, computation paradigms, the digital computation, with the, where we will explain the DQA and the uh, QA UV. This will be made in lectures six and seven. And in lecture five, we will present a summary of uh, how to solve the Q of problem with an analytic quantum uh, computation. So with this, we will have seen an important family of filtration problems that are Q of problems, and we will have presented several methods to solve them, in which we will show that indeed the quantum methods are expected to have an advantage.